can we can we have Masquerade 2 yet? Can we have it, please? It's like they knew how good the Masquerade Bloodlines was. Make Bloodlines 2! Official Bloodlines 2 news has finally been released today. Right when I was chipping away at the Dracula video, which loyal watchers of the Apollo Speaks YouTube channel will be hopefully releasing very soon. This news update may be rather small, but it gives a good glimpse into what we can expect in the future regarding the long awaited sequel for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Now, watchers of my previous Bloodlines 2 update video had a lot to say in regards to the limited amount of information we have received in regards to the production process and the eventual release date regarding the title. And much of what I covered there was mainly captured from small, if not rather vague, interviews with Paradox's CEO, Frederick Wester. However, this update comes from the official Bloodlines 2 account on Twitter, which has announced its new community manager, Debbie Ella. Now, I don't want to keep you all waiting. Kane knows you have been waiting long enough already. So here I will cover the three main portions of this new update. Screenshots, production hints, and refunds. But first, if you enjoy the world of darkness and want to know more about the gritty lore of vampires, werewolves, and other hideous creatures of the night, feel free to leave a like or even subscribe as it helps the channel immensely. Now enough with the preamble. A post uploaded to the Bloodlines 2 official Twitter account made waves throughout the World of Darkness community recently, with the very simple headline, Rise Kindred and join us in September for a big announcement. Paradox, the company which holds the rights to the World of Darkness franchise, has very much kept us in the dark in regards to who is developing Bloodlines 2 and when it will eventually be released. But the very intriguing teaser that we will receive big news in September coincides very interestingly with their event PDXCon 2023. Whilst many of us within the community were hoping we would see an excerpt of Bloodlines 2 at the Paradox Showcase a few months ago, this news is music to, I'm sure, many ears, as Bloodlines should have a rather sizable spot at this upcoming convention. Thusly, we can confirm that the release date and the developer will be confirmed within this showcase in September, which of course is very exciting news for all of us that have been waiting oh so long. On Twitter itself, the Bloodlines 2 account has been fully cleared of legacy updates to the development of the game. And this fills me with hope that we will receive a steadier flow of updates in the future from this account, especially after the news drops within September. Attached to the main tweet itself was a link to the official announcement from Paradox regarding the status of Bloodlines 2, and it reads as thus. Now, whilst this announcement is rather short and probably intentionally vague, one very exciting thing we did receive within this announcement was a fresh batch of screenshots, which capture various locations within Seattle. Whilst these screenshots are admittedly rather generic and only really showcase a few locales, it is the first piece of media we have seen from Bloodlines 2 in absolutely ages. Now, as a fanboy of this stuff, I couldn't help but comb over these images one by one, and despite the quality being a bit rough, at least on my PC, I'm incredibly excited to just see a glimpse into this game that we have been waiting for for years. The screenshots present an interesting array of scenery, perhaps hinting at the variety of locations we can expect in the final game. Of course, the original Bloodlines was iconic for its varied and diverse locations, from the dramatic, if not foreboding, streets of downtown to the jovial yet salacious sidewalks of Hollywood. These screenshots also represent a mixture of environments themselves, which blend the luxurious with the ominous. To me, it feels these screenshots represent a certain facelift that the final product will have, in contrast to what we have seen already. The ambiance of Bloodlines is still very much present, but certain locations appear more stylized. Yet I can't jump to conclusions too soon before we see much, much more. Whilst these screenshots are very exciting, well, at least to me, I'm sure it's nothing compared to what we will see within September 
Tempest Showcase. Hopefully, we will see this new developer's take on the project after Hardsuit Labs' departure. This leads me on to my next topic, which will sort of give insight into this changing of the guard. The most extensive part of this announcement offers both some insight into the development of this game, but also some important news regarding refunds. When Bloodlines 2 was first announced, it came with a variety of additions that one could pre-order, as is the case within modern gaming. The three main deluxe editions one could pre-order, as mentioned within the announcement, were the first Blood Edition, Unsanctioned, Blood Moon, and the Collector's Edition respectively. These editions offered bonus content and physical extras which ranged from in-game outfits and weapons to a physical statuette, mainly of the character Elif. It is interesting to note that specifically the physical editions are being refunded automatically, especially the ones which offered such incentives like the statuette or any physical merchandise tied to the property. One can maintain the digital pre-orders of these games if they choose, but the physical pre-orders are refunded proactively as per the FAQ. This sheds some interesting light into the changes that we may see within the game in this September update. The FAQ states that the prior physical editions no longer represent the game which we will eventually see released. This begs the question, what changes have been made, and has the project dramatically changed course? Now whilst there is the future promise for physical bonus content for these premium editions, I thought it would be interesting to observe the physical content which was deemed unrepresentative of this new final product. We can skim over the digital only bonus content and focus mainly on the merchandise which was formerly provided by DPA Merchandising. The most premium of all editions, the Collector's Edition, offered the most physical merchandise in the forms of the aforementioned statuette, a steelbook of the game, a vinyl soundtrack, a map poster, and a copy of the V5 Vampire the Masquerade rulebook. There is a possibility that I thought of that perhaps the character of Elif, the Tremere vampire seen within much of the previous teasers and gameplay regarding Bloodlines 2, is perhaps no longer associated with the game at present. But that to me would seem like a rather large departure, especially with a character that many people seem to be intrigued by. However, we simply do not know how much of this game has been altered with the departure of various key developers and hard suit labs. Thus, what we may see in September may be a rather different game entirely. One simply hopes that the soundtrack is still amazing and showcases Rick Schaefer in all of his glory. Now, whilst the physical bonus content is confirmed to be explicitly unrepresentative of the game itself, the FAQ also states that the bonus content is being updated. There was a lot of digital content which was promised within these three editions, with some interesting pieces being in development commentary from Brian Mitsoda who is assumed no longer associated with the project, a digital art book, and Jeanette and Smiling Jack digital costumes, to name but a sizable portion of the DLC. It's probably safe to assume that the dev commentary will be absent from the final product, unless we are blessed with Mitsoda's presence at this upcoming convention, of which I would advise that no one gets their hopes up for. Not saying it couldn't happen, but I wouldn't throw your G fuel at the monitor if it doesn't. DLC outfits and items may also be overhauled hauled to represent the new direction of the game, but I would assume that a new art book which portrays the current developer's vision of the game will most likely be replaced. This, however, is all my own speculation, take it with a generous pinch of salt. The final portion of the refund policy concerns the end of the marketing campaign of Blood Points. Whilst you can still check your accrued Blood Points on the Bloodlines 2 website, you can no longer obtain them, as this campaign has now ceased to be. All of this news, while brief in parts, has offered a rather extensive insight into what we can expect going forwards in the next couple of months. It is obvious that changes have been made, but until September we will not truly know how much has altered from the first envisioning of Bloodlines 2. It could be that Bloodlines 2 in 2023 looks completely different to what we saw all those years ago, and I am both extremely excited but also cautious in regards to the hype one can feel when such news regarding a beloved franchise crops up. 
The World of Darkness, Vampire the Masquerade and of course Bloodlines is a big love of mine. I sincerely adore this franchise but I always maintain a healthy level of scepticism when it comes to big releases. With the news of Blood Hunt being no longer updated in any significant capacity and a general amount of burnout brewing through me as my real life job drained me bone dry like an antediluvian at Gehenna's doorstep, I was starting to feel somewhat pessimistic about such projects like Bloodlines 2. It has been a tumultuous time analysing the progress of this project, from being excited about its announcement to being slowly fed less and less information as more delays were put in place. It is indeed good to wait for these things, as all good properties require time and rewarded dedication to achieve something brilliant. My only hope for Bloodlines 2 is that it tells a good story. Vampire the Masquerade, and Bloodline specifically, is a perfect vessel for telling an amazing story. And regardless of setbacks, developer changes, and new additions, I can only hope that the amount of time spent on this project will showcase an experience that we can all enjoy. Even without some of the key developers, who are still mainly treasured to this day for being icons within their field, the core essence of Bloodlines can still be realised. Even if what we see in September is not what we were promised when this property was first teased. At the end of the day, Paradox has been clear enough to state that what we will receive going forwards warrants a refund for those that were promised a very specific experience when they were first pre-ordering the game. And thus, I am remaining very much open to the fact that we may see a rather large departure from the initial course of Bloodlines 2. However, change is not inherently a bad thing, and I am glad that we are finally seeing some transparency from Paradox, and a willingness to offer the opportunity to many fans to change their minds if they are not satisfied with the end product. I for one will stay the course, and be open to the experience that we will eventually be granted. For now, we must simply wait for this September update, to understand what Bloodlines 2 has finally become. As I said before, we've waited this long, what's a couple more months? Thank you for watching. I just wanted to say I'm sincerely sorry that I've made you wait all this time for another instalment on this channel. As I have mentioned before, I experienced a touch of burnout over the last few months, simply due to the fact that my real life job has been rather busy and free time has been scarce for me. I do like to keep these videos high quality and regular, yet sadly that cannot always be the case with my schedule. And thus, these last two months have been spent going back and forth to the drawing board to offer you another great lore experience. Alas, the track the video is on its way and I'm not lying I am editing it it's just taking a really really long time to write editing has finally commenced I'm happy with where it's going I, I honestly hope that we can get it out as soon as possible I am so sorry for the wait um, but it is it is coming all right it is coming I do hope you will enjoy it and hopefully you will see more regular updates on this channel as the year progresses but as always stay safe and do not wander naively into the night.